welcome to a very different kind of YouTube tutorial. My name is Matt Brunel, and I am going to walk through this hybrid setup idea. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of organizations do hybrid events this spring and in the summer, um, and even in the best of times when people are fully vaccinated and the pandemic is behind us, people just sometimes can't attend your event and you want to make it available. We want to break out of the, the four walls of the ballroom and we want to make the event available to people who cannot attend or who are in different parts of the country. And so I have a bunch of notes. I want to make sure I go through it. I tend to ramble, so I just want to keep it simple and clean. What I'm going to cover is setting up the auction items so that people at home can participate in the live auction and the fund to need. And then also, how do you get video to the phones and devices of the people who are at home so that they can actually participate? So people can bid in real time with other people in the room. And we want to make it easy on the auctioneers so that way they can actually uh, do their job without being hindered by some technical overhead or something like that. So the first thing I would do in my event, if I were prepping it for a hybrid, is I would go into my items, manage items, and I want to take a look at my live items. In this example, I have 176 items in my event. They don't close for a couple of days. So I want to filter this down. So I just want to type in live. And I want to see here that I have, I have quite a few. I have 18. Now, something that jumps out at me right away is that I have a special tag for items that people can bid on from home when people are bidding on them in the room. And that's called the event stream. Now you'll notice that I have a handful of these live items that are not event stream. So how do I organize this? Uh, if I want people to bid from home, I need to make sure that they're set up to bid from home. So what I would do is just go to this item that's a live item and I would choose allow event stream bids and I would say yes. Just to make that available so that when I'm running the event live with people in the room, I have a volunteer that can click on the item and make it available for people to bid on. Now, at this point, when you're setting up your live items, it's, it's a good idea to involve your auctioneer because now the auctioneer is gonna have kind of their own set of um, guidelines on how they start the bidding, increments, and so on. And it's really, really important that you're following along in real time while the auctioneer is calling out those increments. So what I mean is, if the auctioneer says, we're gonna start the bidding at $1,000, I want to make sure that I have this at $1,000. And if I know the auctioneer is going to go up by $250 increments, I want to type that in here. And as close as I can get in the auctioneer, this is the one kind of technical thing that the auctioneer needs to know is that when they move around, that makes you work a lot harder. So meaning if they say, okay, let's start the bidding at $250. Okay, who's going to give me $50? Okay, who's going to give me $100? If they're bouncing around and not keeping that increment, you're going to have to do a little bit more work during the live auction because, again, it's, it's a volunteer's job in the room to make sure that people at home can click the right button, that they can press the button that's going to place the proper next bid. It's usually, uh, it's, it's very, very simple. So now I've said yes to event stream and I've set a starting bid and an increment. And then if I go back, I can see now that I've set this to event stream, and that's good. What I wanna do is look at my live items, and I wanna make sure that they're all set the way I want them set. The other thing that's really important to do is if I go to event, I'm gonna type in event stream, and I'm gonna see all the items that I have set up for the being able to bid from home and everything. Now, the other thing I can do, and this is a good practice just as, an, as a pro tip, do this for all your auction items when you're preparing to open the auction for bidding. What you're looking for are outliers. You know, you can, you can see the closing times, make sure there's nothing kind of just strange, like there's a closing time of April 10th or something like that, or, or the day before at 9 p.m. somebody made a mistake. You can also filter up and down to show any discrepancies at the top or bottom. That can also be really helpful. The same thing is true for starting bids and minimum raise values. You might find, oops, I did not mean to set this at 100. I meant to set this at 1,000. And this was not supposed to be 100. This is supposed to be 500. So 
this is a great way to just kind of quickly get a bird's eye view of your auction items to see if they are really ready for the event. Again, this is all prep stuff that you want to do before you open the auction, before the event. It gives you a lot of peace of mind to know that you've looked at this beforehand to make sure that it's ready to go. The next thing I want to take a look at is the other half of our live participation for everybody in the room and at home, and that is the donation item. So I'm gonna do a search for donation and just to pull up my donation items. So these filters are really good for just general use, even uh, beyond just the live auction experience. But now I have, you know, fun to need and fun to cure. Uh, in this example, I might say, well, I didn't mean to have two of them, I'll just delete one. But in this case, what I want to look at is the fund to cure. That's the one that I'm going to have the auctioneer talk about. You know, we're going to start at $2,500. Who's going to give us $2,500? Okay, maybe $2,500 wasn't the right amount. Let's do $1,500. Who has $1,500 to give to this amazing organization? Every $1,500 goes towards, you know, and they're going to do that and work their way down to maybe $100 or something like that. Just click on this item. And what you want to do is make sure it's active and it's going to close in the future. You can turn on recurring donations. If somebody would like to make a $100 monthly donation, they can set that up easily right with turning this on. But I'm going to set up my denominations from a start at $2,500. And again, this is another thing you want to talk to your auctioneer about. Make sure that they're on the same page that you're on. The live auction and the donation items you want to have that conversation with beforehand. Again, I can't say that enough because the more prep you do before the event, the better it is, you know, when you come to the event. You don't have to make any last minute change. So I know I, I make a big deal out of it and it, it's because it really is important. So I'm going to set these up here. And how many do I have? Uh, let's do this one, let's do 100, whoops. So now I have um, six, six increments. We're gonna start at 2,500. We're gonna work our way down to 100. Now, the auctioneer is gonna say, let me see those paddles for 2,500, let me see those paddles for 1,500, let me see those paddles for 1,000. People at home are able to press a button and we're gonna give them one button and that button is gonna be equal to whatever increment the auctioneer is calling off during the event. So we make sure those are set up and at this point we are in really good shape. Now, I wanna bounce over to the Event Central tab and the live broadcast. This is where we're going to be showing a video stream to people at home of what's going on in the room. Now, I have some privacy settings. I'm gonna set this in the, but when I'm testing, so I'm again, I'm setting up before the event. I'm gonna set this to filter on bidders. And I'm gonna find a few, few bidders under my bidders manage bidders page. I'm gonna write down a few numbers that I want people to see this when I test it. Because here's something that's really important. I'm gonna clear my throat because it's so important. Always do a tech rehearsal, and a very specific tech rehearsal on this process. Your volunteer that's going to be running this in the room shouldn't be doing this for the first time at the event. They should definitely do this before the event. And in order to do that, you would just go to your privacy settings and filter on bidders. What this does is it only shows the live and it only shows the appeal and the video stream to these four people that I have isolated here. 100, 102, 103, and 101. And you can add as many as you want. Just separate them with a comma and they'll be able to watch it when you're testing it. And you can do this while people are bidding in the silent auction. If your auction's open, that's okay. Nobody can see it except these four people. But what? how do we get people at home to see what's going on in the room? Now. The answer to that is pretty straightforward. You're going to involve your AV team. So if you're setting up an in-person event in a ballroom, typically, and I wouldn't say 100%, but almost 100% of the time, you have an AV company that is you know, setting up the stage, setting up some projection screens, setting up some microphones, setting up a camera in the back of the room that they can point at the stage. All of that stuff is being handled by the hotel or the, or the ballroom's AV company. So they're already doing a lot of that work for you. And so what they're going to do in the end is when the program runs, they're gonna take material and they're gonna put it on these big TVs or big screens on either side of the presenter. What we wanna do is take another copy of that, just the exact same thing that they're putting on those screens, we wanna send it to the third screen, which is everybody's phone at home. 
And the way to do that, and if you're an AV person, you're probably already way ahead of me and you're like, oh yeah, I think I know what he's gonna go to next is, we want a feed. Now this is my first visual aid. This is an HDMI cable. Picked this up at Best Buy. In this one, it has a smaller end on one side for kind of modern laptops and a bigger end on the other side, the standard HDMI end on the other, but you can buy different kinds of HDMI cables. You want the AV company to give you one of these HDMI ends. And what that is, it's a, it's a feed. If, if you could see the cables that were running under the floor or through the ceiling, it would be one of these and it would be going to the projectors. They're gonna give you a third one, or one, this one, and you're gonna plug it into your laptop. Now, your laptop, what does that mean? That means a, a standalone laptop that is able to broadcast and is connected to the web. So that laptop has to be connected to the internet, has to have a pretty good internet connection. I, you know, Wi-Fi, we do that a lot with Wi-Fi. If you can plug in an ethernet cable, that would be even better. Again, your AV team can help. You're gonna lean pretty hard on the AV team for that. The only other thing you're gonna need, other than this HDMI cable, is one of these little guys right here. This looks like a, USB stick that you put files and stuff on, but it's actually what's called a USB capture card. And I'll make sure that you see a little link to wh what these look like. You can buy a couple different kinds. I have two. One of them is more of a professional cam link, 4, 4K cam link. And this one is a much cheaper. I think I picked this up for $17. I've done a lot of events with this little guy, and it's great. You plug this in to your HDMI cable. And then you plug this USB into that broadcasting laptop. And then basically what that does is it simulates the exact same thing that this guy is right here. It simulates a web camera. What we're trying to do is recreate whatever feed the AV company is giving us. We wanna turn that into what the computer sees as a web camera. And that's what this little guy here does. It converts that into what looks like a web camera, pop it in, and then in Firefox. Now this is this is you know this is the only tricky part. In Firefox, what you want to do is come to your admin and then click on web browser and then open broadcaster. The reason I say Firefox is because Firefox now you're going to see me here. Uh, if I'm showing you my screen, you're going to see my web camera just turned on. And that is exactly what this little guy is going to do. But in Firefox, what's nice is it lets you, it gives you a pop-up first and it asks you which camera you want to use. And you'll be able to choose this guy. It'll say USB capture. You can choose that and then hit start on this little button here. And now you're broadcasting. Anybody at home can see that. So if I just hit start, It'll start connecting, it'll say stop, and now everything that I'm doing right here is going out to the internet. And people on my, my demo account, if they wanted to, if they were logged in, they'd be able to watch it. So hopefully nobody's watching. But anyway, now I'm taking whatever the AV company has given me, I've plugged in, they've given me the HDMI cable from their AV nerd stuff. I've plugged in this little cable here, plugged it into my laptop, and now I've opened up Firefox, and bingo, I'm broadcasting. All right, so let me stop this and close that. I'll, I'm done with my visual aids, that's great. So we've gone ahead and started broadcasting. Now this is again why you wanna do a tech rehearsal. And one of the things that we offer is kind of an AV consulting um, conversation with the AV team. So if, if I can get on the phone with the AV team, we can talk nerd and we can make all this happen so that they know you could walk in as the organization and say, hey, where's that cable I'm supposed to have? And they'll already know, okay, yep, here it is plug it in. That's that's all that's really necessary. They'll take care of it and we can have that conversation. So we've talked a lot about tech rehearsals and what I want to do is I want to simulate one. So I'm going to go into my web browser, I'm going to open my broadcaster and I'm going to hit start. And I'm going to move that um, off screen so that way it's just all it does. So once you hit start, you just you don't have to touch it ever again. It's just broadcasting whatever it is that I'm pointing my cameras at. So in this case, my web camera right here is pointing at me, so I'm able to broadcast that. And it'll just keep broadcasting all day long until I press stop. And so what I wanna do is I want my volunteer to be seated at a laptop, and then they open up the butler. So they can see this screen right here. Now, again, the auctioneers, it's gonna to come to the point in the program where the auctioneer says, all right, folks, let's do the live auction, let's do the appeal, we're gonna, get this going. And at that point, the volunteer is going to press manage your event stream. 
then they're gonna pop that screen open, they're gonna type yes. And again, I'm simulating a tech rehearsal, so not everybody can see this. But the people that I put into my list, one, two, three, four, whatever. So I'm gonna start with item number one, and you'll notice that I have a handful of items here, and those are the ones that were marked. Items, manage items. If I type in event stream, those are the ones here that are listed as event stream. They appear here, right? So I can go ahead and start auctioning them up. The auctioneer says, all right, folks, let's go ahead and we're gonna start with the uh, su Canuck Superfan Experience. And I click on that and I activate it. Now, the other thing I can do is as the volunteer, I can run show feed and I can see here the broadcast that's going on. So I can watch and see what other people, this is what people at home are seeing. So I can actually follow along if I want to. Now, again, like I said, at home, what are people seeing? So let's take a look. This is me at home, I'm bidding, I'm looking at the live auction, I'm looking at the events, and I'm watching the auctioneer talk to the camera. And it's kind of strange because I have a bunch of different video feeds going on at once. So the auctioneer says, all right, folks, let's get this first super fan experience started. And the auctioneer says, let's talk about it for a second. So I'm gonna, as the volunteer, I click on super fan experience and it brings it up in the screen here and it says the starting bid is a thousand dollars but but nobody's bidding yet and in fact if I'm at home I can see here the auctioneer is gonna say bid live and I can read all about it but it says that's not a currently accepting bids and that's because I want the auctioneer to kind of sell it first before we start accepting bids I don't want people bidding and confusing the auctioneer and so I'm gonna hold off on starting the bidding until the auctioneer says, let's start the bidding at $1,000. So when the auctioneer says, let's start the bidding at $1,000, as the volunteer, I press start. And now what's gonna happen is people are gonna start bidding on the item. Now, if the item starting bid is really low, you might get five, six, seven starting bids at once. You know, and the auctioneer's going crazy with just the hands that are in the room. Remember, there's also people watching at home. So the first five or six bids are just going to get the bidding going. It's going to slow down. We're going to get, you know, there's going to be time to place the actual winning bid. So if the auctioneer says, okay, I got, you know, 1,000, 1,200, 14, you're trying to keep up. Now, as the volunteer, when I say keep up, you're going to do this little guy right here, this thing called floor bid. And this is what represents a paddle in the room. So when I press submit, I'm just placing a bid for a thousand dollars notice here what happened is it puts a bid in the history and it says 1000 floor bid placeholder we don't know we're not worried about who it was we're just wanting to make sure that the system knows somebody raised a paddle in the room because what happens is now the button for everybody at home got incremented because I did this the button got updated and so what I'm going to do is move this window just a little bit over here so you can kind of see both. You can see the phone that people are bidding on from home and you can see what's going on in the room. So I'm going to say, okay, somebody placed another bid in the room. Oh, somebody bid 1200. Okay, so I'm going to say 1200. Notice the button went up to 14. Now somebody bid 1400, so now it's going to go up to 16. So I, if the auction's going that slow, yes, it's easy for me to keep up. You know, I can keep adding some bids and it's gonna keep the number going. But if the auctioneer is just on a tear, you can change the current bid on the fly. So let's say the auctioneer is at $4,000 and you're like, I'm not gonna press this button until it says four. So the current bid is 4,000. I'm just gonna press the button. I'm gonna type in 4,000 and it's gonna automatically set the current bid at $4,000. That way, everybody at home sees the button at 4,200. In your mind as the volunteer running the screen, you want to be thinking about what people at home are seeing. So if somebody at home wants to bid, they need to be able to press the right button and it needs to be the right amount. So your job is to keep it updated. And notice I'm placing these floor bids as they come in, people are raising their paddle and it's, it's really easy. I'm just pressing this button every time somebody raises a paddle. I don't need to know who won it because right now, nobody's won it. I'm just making sure this button stays updated. So finally, somebody at home says, I'm gonna bid $4,600. So they bid at home, 4,600. Notice here, it went green for a second, faded out, and now it says 4,600 Marty Hogan. I'm going to now, as the volunteer, I need to tell the auctioneer, hey, 
somebody bid. So I have a paddle or a piece of paper or something that I hold up for the auctioneer to see it. So the auctioneer knows, hey, we got a bid from the internet. Somebody from home bid on this item. So that way, if some if a bid comes in, another bid comes in, and it's like, oh, raise my paddle, I saw it come in. So you're basically bidding by proxy as the volunteer. You're watching and you're maintaining all the data. You're watching things come in. Somebody at somebody in the room bids forty eight hundred. You press the submit button, and then somebody everybody at home sees a button here for um, fifty two. No, that's the next one. All right, fine. I'll bid fifty two. So then they bid fifty two, and then I oh, put my paddle in the air. Now it's a race. Now we, now we've got a competition between who's going to win this, and we keep going back and forth until somebody wins. The bid the auctioneer says going once going twice and sold and what I do is I press the sell button so what that does is you can see here it turns off the button which is exactly we don't want people placing bids after the auctioneer says sold that's not good so we want to make sure that we hit the sell button and now I didn't win the item because I placed a bid but we but the thing is who won it you know now we need to know who these people are not not all of these people just the winner so the auctioneer says thank you fifty four hundred dollars thank you to bidder number one 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 and you hear that one 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 in the room and you tight and you press the little icon I say one 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 and now Sandra Parker won the item now we repeat sign guitar okay folks we got a sign guitar who is gonna win this item I've called it up sign guitar starting bids a thousand dollars and the auctioneer is just gonna talk 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 about the item how cool it is and so on now you can see here that the auctioneer has brought up this item and for whatever reason when I do demos the image blinks so I don't I don't know why it's all it, it's always done that so I bring up this item it's a signed guitar and but nobody can bid on it because the auctioneer saying this is a great item this is a great item and now I'm gonna start the bidding let's start the bidding at a thousand dollars here's my thousand dollars I'm gonna bid from home thousand dollars and now people are gonna bid in the room I'm placing a floor bid floor bid floor bid and another floor bid and if if I accidentally place too many that was a good point if I place too many I can just delete it and so now um, now the current bid is 2500 the next bid is 3000 I can bid on it and I keep doing this and then people bid on it in the room and then people bid on it in the room and if I want to change the starting bid again I have these mechanisms that I can press current bid if, if the current bid is is actually six thousand dollars because it just got crazy I can update it again trying to keep everybody at home updated on what the current bid is going once going twice and sold to bidder 101 all right 101 great so now Steve Gates won that won that item all right so let's go to the appeal we're going to make the transition typically in my experience people have done the live auction and then they go right into the appeal so let's do the appeal as the spotter all i have to do is press donation items if i click on fund a cure that's the one i have these increments now so all i did as the volunteer is i pressed fund a cure and i've got this blue button over the twenty five hundred dollars the auctioneer's talking about how big of a deal this is, how exciting it is, and now I've got a $2,500 button at home. These are the people at home. The right side of my screen is everybody at home. So they say, oh, I can give $2,500. And again, the screen up here that's talking is the auctioneer saying, who's going to give me $2,500? And so at home, this gives me a chance to press the $2,500 number. And again, I've given $2,500, and now it shows up here as Marty gave 2500 what I can do again is take my paddle or my whatever my boomstick or whatever I put it in the air is that spotter and I let the auctioneer know somebody at home gave $2,500 the auctioneer can say that's amazing $2,500 somebody from home is watching this video and they are so compelled folks you here in the room you don't have you don't have an excuse you need to give $2,500 and so people in the room can raise their paddle 
and those will go get added. Again, now the, how do those get added? That's actually another tutorial on how to use our um, appeal display features in the Butler, which you can watch a video on that, but those can get added. That would take just another person typing in um, bidder numbers. As paddles go up in the air, type in the paddle, it adds the 2500. The auctioneer says, okay, you know what? Maybe 2,500 wasn't the right amount. You didn't, that's not the one you feel comfortable with. But let's say 1,500 folks, $1,500 also provides X, Y, and Z to this organization. And now everybody at home gets a $1,500 button. And so that is the button that they can press. If they don't want their name to show, they can press that. And it'll come in as anonymous. And now you can, again, that volunteer that's running the display or running the feed is putting their paddle in the air or they're, they're you know, getting the auctioneer's attention at 1500. And then they're gonna knock it down to 1000. And then you can see at home, it's it's responding. The, the, the important thing is, is that at home, I'm not doing anything. All I did was press give live and it let me give. And then I can keep working my increments down to eventually getting to that other. And then those amounts keep coming in. And once that's over, You'll have the grand total. The auctioneer can see exactly what's going on. Now, let me just check my notes. I want to make sure I came up with everything. Yep, looks like we're good. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, hopefully, this was really helpful. Uh, I definitely recommend that tech rehearsal. I recommend having you know somebody at ClickBid myself. Uh, I'm available to talk to any AV team to make sure that they get you this connection. Once you get this connection, you're good. It's going to be the same every time you just plug it in and broadcast. That simple. You can just, let me bring this back over here. You can see here, I'm still broadcasting. So again, once you start broadcasting, it just doesn't stop. This is what people at home are going to use to stay in sync with what's going on in the room. And in fact, even if they don't want to participate in the live auction, they can watch the event. It's a great way to get outside of those four walls of the ballroom and engage people that can never come to your event or are sick or don't want to you know risk getting sick any of that stuff so anyway if you have any questions we're always here to help thank you so much